Domestic equines are managed by humans for better or for worse. They have different stresses to their more natural living counterparts. But as I said in an earlier video, once you know how, there's a lot you can do to create a better lifestyle for your horses. Make sure you keep watching this series right to the end. Some owners do tend to read the behaviour of their horse wrong. A common misconception, for instance, is that a horse likes his stable because horses will often rush into a stable. This is more likely to be because the horse knows the stable contains food. Once the food is eaten, the horse would usually like to go back out again, but chances are he doesn't have that choice. Confined horses sometimes develop stereotypic behaviours not seen in free living horses, and unfortunately it's an accepted practice among many horse owners and horse managers to use archaic methods to prevent these behaviours such as an electric shock collar pictured on the left which is particularly cruel and is illegal in some countries but can be bought on the internet and just like a more traditional wind sucking collar pictured on the right it only masks the problem but does nothing to solve it research has shown that crib biting and wind sucking are usually caused by insufficient fiber the horse is swallowing saliva to alleviate the acid building up in the stomach in this example, there are solid walls and a cage door. The horse cannot even put their head over the door to look down the aisle. This example is possibly the worst case scenario, apart from a solid door, and believe it or not, this practice is still in use. The example in this picture is also more common than you would think. If you visit a zoo and see animals in cages, it probably upsets you. But this is no better than a cage. A typical stable or stall would be totally unacceptable in a modern zoo. Imagine visiting a zoo and seeing an animal as large as a horse in a cage as small as a stable or stall. You would certainly have something to say about it. Yet it's seen as acceptable to many horse owners in the horse industry. Not all, I know, but it is to many. This is because it's part of the culture of horse keeping. It's a largely accepted practice. People get used to seeing such things and they become immune to them. Modern zoos now go to great lengths to provide species specific enrichment for the animals in their care. We need to do the same for our horses. Keeping horses in enclosures is not always avoidable, but there's usually lots that can be done to improve the situation. These stables are much more horse friendly than normal. The horses can choose whether to socialise or not. They can even mutually groom each other over the wall. They can put their heads over the door in the aisle or outside. These stables are a huge improvement on the previous example. Funnily enough, even though it used to be horses that were the work animals, were now the workhorses. As well as extra care, confined horses also need lots of extra work and expense. Make sure you keep watching this video series to find out how you can reduce some, if not most, of the work and certainly reduce the expense and keep your horses healthy and happy at the same time. We have to be ever mindful that we do what is right for our animals, even if that means not following the crowd. Horses are particularly good at surviving on very high fibre grasses. In fact, they thrive on them. In the wild, they eat grass that's long and fibrous, and when there's not enough of that, they eat shorter grasses. They may actually eat some of both throughout the day. It depends on what's available. Longer grasses have more fibre and less sugar per mouthful, and shorter grasses have less fibre and more sugar per mouthful. This is a very important point, which we'll be returning to later. Of the series you've learned why horses eat so much and why fibre in particular is so important. That is, to buffer the acid that's constantly being secreted into the stomach. Also, when a horse eats enough fibre, a message is sent to the brain to tell the horse he is full and to stop eating. Fibre is also extremely important to keep the gut contents moving through the gut. So, if a horse has enough fibre and he's healthy, he'll not usually overeat. So it's very important that a horse always has plenty of low sugar, high fibre food available. But the role of the 21st century horse is very different to that of their ancestors and traditional horse keeping practices have not adapted to these changes. 